Hello, my name is Mitchell Wilson. I am a professional actor doing acting and drama at college. I was thinking, you know, this is what I want to do forever. Do what you want, what will make you happy and what will fulfill your happiness. Because at the end of the day, like, you've got to make yourself happy and put yourself first. This is a period of my life that you've just got to get over the next hurdle. another video and episode of Just Chat with Jay. Today I'm joined by my gorgeous, lovely cousin and housemate, TikTok dancing partner. <laughs> and what else are you? That's a good question. One third of five I. One third of five I. Yeah. My, what's the opposite of a landlady? What, the tenant? Yeah, my tenant. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to be talking about all things acting. Oh, a conversation. Mitchell is an actor and he has been in the industry pretty much since school. So I want to talk about the whole process and journey of being in the industry, getting into it, going through COVID and then also where we're at now. We start by you just doing a bit of an introduction to yourself. How would you introduce yourself to someone on the street? Hello. Oh, hi. My name is Mitchell Wilson. I'm 24 years old. I'm originally from Middlesbrough, but I now live in Lee with my cousin Joanna. I am a professional actor. I'm allowed to say that now. Mitchell, professional actor. Nice to meet you. I just think it's funny, but I can say that now. So I'm an actor, but I'm also a content creator. Uh, I do a lot of content on TikTok. I'm just doing me. You know, this is me just trying to be the best version of myself. Look at yeah. acting. How did you get into it? Because I, I mean, I remember when we were kids, Mitchell played every single character from every single movie, cartoon program that we watched and for some reason none of us ever said or thought he's gonna be an actor one day mm. do you remember when you thought oh actually i really like acting and this is what i want to take forward is it my career when you look back when, when i look back i always like you're right i used to be fascinated by characters and movies and tv shows and in per i'd say start by impersonating yeah. i loved and I still do to this day, like accents intrigue me. Um, particular characters and emotions really intrigue me as a person. Everyone you meet has something to offer that I can take. You know, there's always inspiration for voices and characters. But I'd say in terms of when I specifically thought that maybe this is where the, the kind of line that I want to go down was maybe in year nine, you start to realize, for me anyway, where I kind of belong in whatever line of work it is or whatever profession and I think one of my drama teachers might be Miss Yale she explained to my mum that he's he's just different he hangs around with a certain crowd but there's something that about him that is making me think that this is what he wants to do because he's enjoying it and he's good at it, that line and since then it kind of has just always been acting so since the age of like 13 it's just there yeah. it's just this thing I do and it's part of who I am and anyone who knows me or speaks to me knows that's part of who I am so I've kind of built that up since around the age of 13 when we're at 13 what was the sequence of events after that so I'm guessing you did drama at GCSE mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. A-level? I did it at GCSE. The, the original plan was I always wanted to be a teacher. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that was that was it. That was my life plan. That was literally it. I wanted to be a teacher and I wanted to be the best at it. I wanted to be the best teacher in the world. I wanted like, my goal at times was I wanted students, if they were at a party or they were speaking about a teacher years later, they'd be like, do you remember Mr. Wilson? He was the coolest teacher ever. That was always my goal. That's all I wanted. Started doing it at college. Um, I think I think I kind of realized that maybe this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Teaching it is great and I love to give experiences, but there was moments even on my course doing acting and drama at college, I was thinking, you know, this is what I want to do forever. In some form or aspect, this is literally it, even if it's just something so small and little. There was actually a point where I thought I was going to do law. I did really, really well at law. I got an A in law. I was going to actually study at Leeds University at one point. Miss Dent, shout out Miss Dent, she was awesome. She really pushed me to do law, but she didn't realize that I was like, Miss, I want to be an actor. She was like, what? Like, <laughs> hang on a minute. And she was like, what the hell is that? And at the time I was doing a show called The History Boys, 
at the Middlesbrough Little Theatre. When I started explaining to her how passionate I am about it and I love this and I love that, she kind of got it slowly. So there's a difference between do you follow your passion and what you love or something that you are good at? There's that real fine line. Yeah. And um, yeah, since then I went on to do it at Northumbria University. I did acting and performance. And then I fell in love with it even more. When I got into university in my acting course, I slowly realised that, you know, this is the line of do you want it or do you not? That's when I realised that, you know, it's the act the industry is really tough and it can be and it's competitive as hell especially for a lad from the northeast i stand by that it's really tough but you have to persevere if you love it and you keep going regardless thank yeah. god you chose acting and not law yeah 100 <laughs> percent. so being a guy in the acting industry mm. there can be stigmas around that it sometimes can feel a little bit different to what other guys are doing and pursuing particularly at that that sort of age that you mentioned 13, 14 mm. um, when everybody's deciding what their hobbies are and your mates for example might be playing football or playing rugby yeah. and you're doing school shows like mm. how did you land that what were your experiences about being a male particularly at those sort of ages where it's it's a little bit questionable whether or not to go down that that room yeah it was tough at first I'd stand by it was really tough at first especially the crowd I used to knock around with they were very the lads I used to kick about with specifically were very like lads lads we were like the group in school and we would play football and then lads have gone on to do things like it's been stereotypical but sure they're going to do stuff like engineering or things in that field but that was typically never, male like typically yeah. males do yeah but yeah. that didn't interest me at all I remember when th- I think it was when we first started to pick our options in school and then we went into college and um, we did Greece and and like yeah. and legitimately and like legitimately it was like literally the second I that kind of showed that crossover and I was knocking about with these people or that people there was a bit of like a I don't know like a switch in their brain it's not for me nothing changed for me but it was a bit like what are you doing that for what what are you knocking about with them for why are you doing that it's because, because I love it but now it's those people who I see in a bar in a pub if I see them on the street if I go home they'll, they'll come up to me and they'll, they'll say things like what you're doing is sick I love what da, 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 da. And it's yeah. like that love is is cool like, like it's awesome and obviously I show interest in everyone but it's like is it is it because of age and what people thought at the time when you were younger we've just matured and realised well yeah. what's wrong with that so anyone who wants to do anything if it's something out of the ordinary or something that may not be seen as cool or the right thing to do like do what you want what will make you happy happy and what will fulfill your happiness because the other day like you've got to make yourself happy and put yourself first and I did and like I might got to call it stick not stick but like I can take it but it's I don't know it's kind of like just do you just yeah. just do you so we went through this journey and decided okay it's acting that's what I love that's what I want to do Covid hit yeah was so tough. Your final year of uni, you didn't even get to properly graduate mm. or say goodbye to the people that you spent the last three years with, finish your course, etc., etc. And then also you're in this industry that's predominantly built on being around other people, be it on set, performing at a show where people literally have to sit next to each yeah, other no to come and watch. So what the hell happened then? Well, it was like we. I thought the industry was going to die. Yeah, I, I thought. Well, like everyone thought. Literally, you've just done it. Agree <laughs> in an industry that's like my die like, like it's on it's then <laughs> I need to go back to Leeds and do law. <laughs> like, get on the phone. I'm like, I'll do three more years. Yeah. I'll go one more time. But like, like everything, when it hit, it was a bit of a, a tough blow to take. I remember yeah. we were, the way it works is at any acting course, you do a thing called production showcase, which is where casting directors, agents, people in the industry, in the acting industry, in that region or whoever you invite, they come to watch your final year performance. It's on a professional scale, in a theatre or wherever it may be. Be, and it's huge it's supposed to be massive one of the directors walked in what during our rehearsals for the play we were doing and she said we're done I was like, what do you mean we're done? She said, oh, well, there's this thing called COVID. And it's the way she said it, it was as if, like, it was nothing. There's this thing called COVID. Uh, might be away next week, but we'll just stop rehearsals for a bit. And I never saw any of them ever again. None of them. And I, like, and they were the people who, like Jay said there, I did two, three years with. We worked for this. And, and we didn't get our production showcase, as many other people didn't, who were on an acting course at the time. And you had to find your feet. And a lot of people, 
people, unfortunately, who were incredibly talented, who I trained with, don't act anymore. They, they lost that passion. Yeah. I remember my mum sat down with me during it all. At the time, I was working at Amazon in a warehouse. I remember. You had the record for packaging I boxes. I did. It's <laughs> actually <laughs> true. In Darlington, that is actually true. <laughs> but during that time, I was just working because I, I didn't know what else to do. And my mum just said, you can either go one of two ways. You can either take this situation in COVID and just accept that this is going to defeat you and it's going to put you down a different path. Or you can look at the situation and go, what can I do to, to get to where I want to be next? So from then on, then, you know, I got a show reel. I got an agent, my previous agent at the time. I put myself out into the industry. I just put myself out there. I did. You started making TikToks. Yeah. And I, and I, yeah, well, yes, through COVID, that's what kind of helped catapult me as well. And, you know, I built kind of a brand, well, like a name for myself and a brand. And, and since then, I just kind of kept going. I think that was the drive that just pushed me. But at the time, it was scary because the industry, I thought it was, it was done. Yeah, and it, really it, could, it could well be. Yeah. Everyone was saying things like every TV show in the future is going to be on Zoom. And it's like, my brain was like, it's not like it's too much money and value in what this industry does for people to just let that go. Yeah. I was like, there's no way. So I didn't give up. I just thought this is a period of my life that you've just got to get over the next hurdle. Yeah. Just keep going. So what was your first piece of work mm -hmm. post-COVID in the acting industry? It was my one-man show. Uh, it's All Just Time. It was my first professional credit, you could say. It was my piece that I wrote during COVID. I remember the, the reception that got was sick. I got four stars out of five from the Theatre Weekly. We did it on Vimeo. It's now on YouTube. It's I think that's... I'll link it below if you want yeah. to watch Mitchell's or Manchester. Thank you. So I was like, I have to give this to the people. I don't care about anything else. And since then, it just kind of, it delved into me going into different variations of acting. I've done some more theatre work, which is what I'm trained in. Done some short films, commercials. It just kind of branched off from there. When I graduated in 2020, two and a half years on, the things I've done, like, that's where it kind of started for me. And you moved to Leeds. Why? I just wanted a new environment and I wanted to be surrounded by like-minded people and family. I think I just needed a fresh start. And like, it could have been a more moment where I could have moved back to Newcastle. I'm kind of glad I didn't. The opportunities that have been put to me and the things I've done like are sick. Until you land a big break, it's a bit of a grind. You have to get told no a lot, both financially, <laughs> but then also mentally, like cope with that. Yeah, that that is such a big one. In terms of financially, I still work a job. I work in a bar. They call it a muggle job, which the, makes me smile. <laughs> yeah, it's my, it's my muggle job. But but it, it, to me, it is. This is not what I want to do for the rest of my life, but I work the hours that I do at my bar job because it pays the bills. Like feasibly, I can live off it and do what I I want to do. I'm going back to like the needs. Forget yeah. the wants. It's like the needs. I need to do those things. In terms of a mental thing, it's tricky. It, it's really, really tricky. You get told no, but I, I see the no as like it's another step closer to that yes that like Jay said, it's going to change my life. And there have been moments where I thought this could change my life. I, I just try and envision that like moment. But when it all happens, when it does eventually happen, it's like it'll just seem like the right time. But the universe is saying not yet. It's just don't stay in positive and just keep going. Because I think a lot of people, when they do get that no, it's not working. They just want to give up. I speak a lot about discipline now. That's like the discipline to be like, you just have to keep going, keep going. And what's the what's the dream? But if I'm gonna be honest, as in my profession, I would just love for at some point in my career to. I love the audition process. I love it. It's one of my. I think it's it's great because it teaches you a lot about yourself through it. But I would love. I've built it such a big of a name for myself that I'm not necessarily asked to audition ever again. I'm sent stuff saying, "Would we would love you to do this?" And I might read it and go speak to my agent. I don't know if this is me. So maybe not. Or maybe I love it. Let's do it. Maybe more of that. Not something specific, but in terms of an all-round goal as an actor, I've built up a name enough where people could go, you could do that. Rather than, let's give him an audition and see what he does, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, do you want to know what my dream and goal is? What? That all three of the Wilsons feature at some point in their lives on a reality TV competition <laughs> show. <laughs> so Niall's already done Dancing on Ice. 
and has won it. There's some point Mitchell and me in our careers get on I'm the same or different <laughs> or whatever. See, I like think three Wilsons have been on the, on the reality TV competition. And we'd all have to put the, the pedestals, we'd have to go on to win. I'll set the bar, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very feasible that that could yeah. possibly happen. What piece of advice would you give to somebody who is in the industry it's going to be really tough it will and it may seem daunting and you might stress and you might feel various emotions throughout the whole process but that's part of the process and enjoy the process don't allow it to take over your life and change the way you are just realize that it's all going to happen in time and I'd say just enjoy it just like enjoy it I think as people are thinking about the destination but what is the destination even I don't know it so I just enjoy the journey I enjoy the little things and just keep going just grind away at it that's, that's what I'd say thanks just, Mitch just, thank you thank you for having me thanks for chatting to me I love that that was one of my favourite ones of these that we've done that was sick thank, thank you. you I appreciate that well, thank you guys for watching it make sure you go and follow Mitchell on TikTok on Instagram I'll link his one man show down below so go and watch that and yeah if there's anything else that you want to chat or hear Mitchell chat about we obviously have access to him because he lives here yeah. <laughs> so I'm it's next, not like the, yeah. I'm in the give a room next door it's not okay. like some other people that like Olivia for example who's gone back to Canada yeah, now yeah. Like, you actually live here so we could have loads of conversations mm -hmm. so yeah remember to subscribe to this channel this is the third channel because I'm third. ridiculous that is mad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you do enjoy these sit down longer form chat style videos then definitely subscribe because we're going to have one coming every single Wednesday. Keep smashing it and remember anything is possible if you just work. <laughs> just work. <laughs> Bye.